Stay with us. Good afternoon, I'm Michelle Arthur with the CBC News Break. More than 1,000 jobs will be created when the Samros Castle by Wyndham Resort opens. This comes from Prime Minister Frendel Stewart as he spoke at the groundbreaking ceremony for the Wyndham Samros Castle today. Prime Minister Stewart believes much economic growth can be expected from the project. The hotel will employ in excess of 1,000 persons after completion and is also expected to generate approximately 2,000 additional jobs in other sectors of the economy. Foreign exchange earnings to be made by the property are estimated at over 70 million US dollars a year, with a direct contribution to the GDP of 35 million US dollars. The Prime Minister added benefits will come, especially to the residents of St. Philip. Residents of this parish will be able to earn income as entrepreneurs, service and produce providers, and hotel employees. A number of farmers in the area will now have another market for their produce, and artists and craftsmen will also reap a similar benefit. China's ambassador to Barbados, Her Excellency Wang Ke, says that more projects can be expected from ties between Barbados and the People's Republic of China. It is also worth mentioning that besides Sam Law's Castle Hotel, China and Barbados are negotiating other projects to, to be funded by China's preferential loans, such as re reconstruction and expansion of Grand uh, Adam, Han Adam International airport and Pierhead marina project in Bridgetown. We have every reason to expect a promising future of China Barbados cooperation for mutual benefit. The opposition Barbados Labour Party has severed ties with its MP for Christchurch West, Dr. Maria Agard. She was sent back in following a meeting last evening at the party's National Council at its Robert Street City headquarters. Dr. Agard, who was accompanied by her two councils, Hal Gallup and Lynette Eastman, walked out of the disciplinary hearing to which she was called to answer nine charges. Opposition leader Mia Motley said the decision to expel the MP was not an easy one, but had to be taken as a matter of principle. She highlighted the failure of the MP to recognize the legitimacy of a dem democratically elected branch of the party, her own branch. The BLP also extended appreciation to its former Christchurch West MP for her years of service. A process to choose a successor to represent the BLP in the Christchurch West constituency is expected to start soon. Political terrorism, that's how Minister of Education Ronald Jones has summed up the developments taking place between the Christchurch West MP Dr. Maria Agard and the BLP. He sees the move as an orchestrated attempt to bring down the representative for working with a government MP of a neighboring constituency. Mr. Jones told a DLP meeting at the Hilda Scheme Primary School that unlike the BLP, the Democratic Labour Party allows democracy to flourish within that organization. Democracy allows for different views to be brought to the center. Democracy allows for contestation of ideas and of views. And if I don't want a Rick to walk with me, I'll Rick walk with somebody else. Still stay in the party, That's still right. make the party strong. Huh. Don't seek to take out Ronald Jones. Don't seek to say, but you talk to the nation. Mr. Jones says while political parties have disciplinary codes and committees, there must be some level of concern for all the parties involved. You can't be guilty before it is proven. Hmm. That, that is not how our system works. No. That is not what we do in Barbados. And therefore, political parties who lead Barbados mm -hmm. must represent within their own codes mm -hmm. a process which recognizes that the party is innocent mm -hmm. until proven guilty. 
Barbados and Perry, a bit more for liquefied, liquefied petroleum gas, also known as bottle gas. The change in prices came into effect at midnight. The 100-pound cylinder is now being retailed at $155.55, and that's up by $3.84. The 25-pound cylinder, $43.99, an increase of $0.96, cents, while the 22-pound cylinder is being sold at $38.87, an increase of $0.84. Cents. The 20-pound cylinder will now cost $35.34, up 77 cents. Over 50 children with life-threatening conditions have had their wishes granted by the Precious Touch Foundation over the last eight years. The Foundation's Vice President, St. Alban Calendar, has revealed, however, funding has been one of the major challenges. So far, we've been fortunate in being able to meet the needs of all of the wish-granting children, all of the wishes that have been made by children. We have so far been able to meet it is a great challenge and we are now facing down, you know, a really significant challenge, but we hope to be able to continue granting all of those wishes. As the charity celebrates its eighth anniversary, President Adoriel Maxwell Hazel says they'll be seeking to inform more people of their work. We're just hoping that um, we can get more persons coming to help the foundation and it is our, our wish. <laughs> that more persons would learn of the foundation and be aware of the wonderful work we are doing here in Barbados. Barbados is among five Caribbean states to participate in the U.S. visa program. The United States Citizenship and Immigration Services and the Department of Homeland Security, in consultation with the Department of State, added five CARICOM countries, among others worldwide, that are eligible to participate in its visa programs. Barbados, Belize, Grenada, Haiti, and Jamaica are eligible to participate in the H-2A and the H-2B visa programs, effective January 18th next year. The H-2A and the H-2B visa programs allow U.S. employers to bring foreign nationals to the United states to fill temporary agricultural and non-agricultural jobs. The second logistics and supply chain project put on by the Caribbean Postal Training Center was concluded recently. Interim Secretary General of the Caribbean Postal Unit, Renal Baldio Singh, says that participants must share their knowledge when they return to their respective countries. Increase in value. Note that these workshops can only increase in value as an investment when we engage in knowledge transfer, when we return to our respective territories. The knowledge and the elevated purpose and the confidence which we gain here place us in the position of wanting and needing to share the experience. The training was done by the United States Postal Service. Facilitator Carlos Rodriguez outlined some of the things the participants learned from the training. Representatives of the UPU, Jan Bojnowski and Mike Ashby, our own, provided insight on several available technological solutions offered through the UPU, such as the quality control system, the global monitoring system, and the customs declaration system, that if used effectively, will help you manage the performance and efficiency of your mail operations. Regional and international stories are just ahead.